Hi guys, it's Troy at The Full Setup here, back with another video for you today, and today we are doing a case review. Now the case we're going to be reviewing today is the GameMax Spectrum. Now one thing many of the subscribers might remember, for most of last year and into this year as well, I had the GameMax Onyx case up there. Now the Onyx case was, a, again like this, a full tempered glass case with RGB fans in the front, um, and you could pick it up between about 50 and 70 pounds. And it wasn't a perfect case, it suffered from airflow, it didn't have a lot of airflow, it wasn't very good radiator support, but it was a fantastic looking case. Um, and for the price as well, you could pick it up between about 50 and 70 pounds. Now this Spectrum is a slightly taller case. We've got fancier addressable RGBs in the front, and we can fit radiators in the top this time, but it costs in the region of about 100 pounds, and that almost puts it against Corsair 460X money. Um, and the 460X is going to have better airflow than this case. So we're going to take you in for a closer look. I'm going to show you all around the case. I'm going to stick a build in it as well, do a bit of a time-lapse build. Um, and then I'm going to come back with the pros and cons on this case and whether I think you should buy it or not. So looking at the GameMax Spectrum, apologies if I do call it Onyx in this video. I had the Onyx case for a while. You can see it is a beautiful looking case. We've got tempered glass all the way around the case, around the front, around the back, around the top, all the way around, except the bottom. That's the only place there's no glass on this. The included RGB fans look fantastic. Lots of color options on here as well. There is also an included remote. Now, the remote's by no means perfect. You've got options for solid colors. There's a sensor on the side I'll show you in a second, so that's fine. There's on the bottom here, there's some like Q, Q1, Q2, so these are just different modes. Now, if you watch this mode, let's look at Q3. Let's watch this. And it just stops. What's that about? What's that about? Well, it's not all bad. Some of them are, some of them are much better to get around here. Sorry, I haven't really got the sensor well positioned at the moment. So this one's fine. This color cycles all the way through. Now, there are mode options on the remote. And these are much better. So you can go through loads of different cycles. We've got lots of different color options. You can adjust the speed of this as well. Solid colors there. And then sort of ring round. Like I said, these fans look freaking fantastic. Look at that. That's beautiful. That is a real nice piece of art. Now over onto the top, plenty of IO. There is a fan speed controller and an RGB light one, but I don't think you can have both running at once at the moment. I've got the lights on the RGB. We'll show you that in a second. And there's an RG button. Buttons feel much nicer on this as well than the Onyx case. Um, we've got power and hard drive notification LEDs. Then there is also microphone input, headphone input, two USB 2.0s, two USB 3.0s. No type C, but this IO panel looks fantastic and a power switch as well. Again, like I said, the switches feel so much nicer than the Onyx case. So all in all, this looks like a beautiful case, right? This is gonna be some beautiful RGB build we can put in here. And you're right, but it's very flawed and it's flawed in the same way the Onyx case is. And that is the fact that you've got no airflow. It's a, it's a tempered glass case. This is a 50 pence piece, okay? Just about fits, just about goes all the way around on this. I can't get a second one in. Now this as well, this glass, it finishes up flush to the other piece. So the air essentially has to go through like a two mil gap, then it has to take a right angle to get some airflow into the case. Now there are a few other bits and bobs maybe where you could get some airflow. There's like this going in the back here, so you can have your fans pointing in, but this case is slightly taller than the Onyx case because it can fit a full radiator. As for the height, we're at 52 centimeters, so that's still pretty close to mid tower, but pretty big to tower. So 52 centimeters or 420 millimeters, 47 in depth, 47 in width, or 470 millimeters. And going across, we have 22 centimeters or 22. So yeah, looks fantastic, but we have some issues. Let's take a look inside. Now this is another thing that hugely annoys me about this case, right? So we take the panel off. Look at all the airflow gaps. Look at all of that. And that is because this is another case. This is a case that's been used as another chassis. So that's gonna be another negative point. You can see here where side panels went on. Now I know a lot of case manufacturers recycle cases, but how hard is it just to get this panel changed, just to get this bit changed? So you haven't got this, oh look, it was actually another case at some point thing going on with it. Now here is what they should have done with this case. I mean, the holes are already marked out for it. It's actually quite comical. If I can get it the right way. 
definitely figured this out the other day. Oh yeah. It's like that, wasn't like that. Look at that. Look at that. You take that bit of glass off, front airflow. Look at all that front airflow. So this glass should be cut down like that. Honestly, if you're building, I would even recommend putting the build on like that and having the glass come out the back of the case. It'll actually hold some of your cable drops as well. But we're gonna have to build in this as it should be built in. So let's have a little look inside the case. So in the front of the case, you have got room for radiators, although I wouldn't recommend it. I would just let whatever airflow you can come into this case. There's also pullouts for, um, DVD drive, so again, you know, not liking this constant use of using recycled cases, doesn't look too good on the inside, but you have got the options to put radiators in the front if you want. We've also got two removable SSD drives. We're gonna do a build in this in a minute. Anyway, I'll do a build montage. So these just pop off. So these just pop off. As you can see, we've got a bracket here, so we can put 2.5, 2.5 inch SSDs or 2.5 inch hard drives in. Then we've also got lots of grommets as well, so depending on what size motherboard, if you're gonna put a smaller motherboard in here or a full size ATX, you're fully covered with all the grommets that are inside this case as well. There's no, so as you can see, there is no basement cover in this case here. It almost looks like there is a lip like it was supposed to have one at some point. But we've got an RGB power supply in it. I've got it set to one color at the moment, so it's not jipping the camera out. This is the GameMax 550 RGB power supply video about this over on my channel. Now, one thing I mentioned about this power supply, and this is something which all power supplies suffer from, that when you're facing this way, so you've got your fans pointing up because we've got the LED here, all your cables have to reach a little bit further because the CPU cable would normally be here, be at the back of the case. Now, this length of it's on the front, but it does just about reach. It is very tight though. If you were gonna be using a power supply in this case, you know, with the fan flipped up that way, I would definitely recommend you might want to get an 8 pin extension. I think this should be fine for most motherboards. I don't think it will be with the one I'm using today. But I wanted to cover that because I said I would cover it in the unboxing of this video. Other than that, we've got loads of space as well. Looks like maybe there was, you know, it would have been nice if there was a removable hard drive cage down here just for you people that want lots of hard drives. But we've got lots of hard drive options anyway. Now, all the standoffs are already fitted in place for you, but you want to make sure before you put your motherboard in, um, that none of your that your standoffs fit where your standoffs are on your motherboard because if there is one pressed against the back of your motherboard it could short that we've got seven PCIe slots lots of airflow coming through these because we're going to need it and then again look lots of airflow here we've got this like honeycomb airflow so maybe the designers did realize there wasn't a lot coming in the front because what I would recommend for a graphics card for this case is not to put a reference blower design in this case I had, and this is a worst case scenario, I had a Vega 64 for a few weeks and I had it in the Onyx case and I had to have the side panel off. So what you want is a graphics card with multiple fans, so it's gonna pull loads of air in here. Yes, it will dump it back into your case, but then you can remove that air out of your rear 120 fan here, or maybe some fans in the top. Now the top of the case does come off very sketchily. It's got really hard pull to get this off, but it does come off. Just gonna lightly put that down there. I haven't tried to pull the front off. I imagine the front does come off once you've got the top off. Definitely feels like it pulls off, but I haven't had a reason to. But we have, this is the one advantage over the Onyx. As you can see here, we have room for a 240 millimeter radiator. And now the choice is gonna be yours. If you haven't put a very hot graphics card in this, I would definitely go over radiator in the top. Like I said earlier, something like a Vega 64 reference, R9 290, 390, you know, real hot card. I would probably have fans pushing air down in here. So we've got fans pushing in and then the air coming out. Or you could at least have dual push-pull fans coming off your radiator. We'll see if, if that is an option in a second. So let's have a look around the back of the case. Moving on to the back of the case then. So we've got even more hard drive support. We've got loads of it. We've got another one of these 2.5 inch hard drives here. And then we have two 3.5 inch hard drives. One here, one here. I would probably recommend using this back one to hide cables. You're going to have to be really good with your cable management with this case. So there we go. And you can see, so you can just pop a 3.5 inch hard drive in there. And see, that literally just slots in and then you can screw it back in. Boom. Now the cables were a lot tidier when you first get this. They're very well organized. You've got Velcro strips going all the way down here. but 
I wanted to have a good look at it. So there is a fan controller which is velcroed onto the back of the case. And look, we have options all the way up for 10 fans, fan speed, mode, and LED speed as well. Now, I forgot to mention there's also LED speed on the remote. Now, what you get in the top here, there's like a, there's a cable that you can put in. So it comes with this cable installed. One's a PWM, so you can hook them up to your motherboard, which is quite nice. The other one says reset switch. Now, there's a problem with this when you plug in that one, is that there isn't a reset switch on this. We have power switch, power LED plus and minus. And I mean, I've tracked all these cables back as well. And then we have HD LED. Then we have these two cables, which I don't know if we're in focus at the moment because it's really hard for me to see on camera. But one's a three pin and one's a two pin. So the three pin goes up to your fan speed, right? And the two pin goes to the RGB. So you just pull that out of there and you put the two pin in the middle two pins of here. This allows you to control, just do the RGB lighting effects, right? But you're gonna lose your PWM. Now this fan speed one, I can't see where it plugs into. If I plug it into the top, it only seems to do the RGB. So I can't see how you can adjust the fan speed on the front of this. If anyone figures it out, let me know in the, in the comment section. So you, yeah, you've really got the options. If you want PWM control of your fans, you're gonna be using the remote. If you wanna use the top button, the RGB button, then you're gonna lose PDF, PWM control of your fans. Now there is also the sensor cable that comes out of the bottom. I literally just poke this up at the top. So I've literally just been poking it out of one of these holes here and letting it drop down. I haven't found that it's, even though it's looping over where the glass would sit, that it's pushing it out of the way. And then that way you've got control of your sensor. As for other cables as well, we've got two really long USB cable, HD audio, and we have a USB 3.0 cable as well, which is very long. Anyway, that's the case. Let's build in it. So everything is built inside the case and I decided to bring a new lease of life to my older i5 2500k build and I must say this case looks absolutely fantastic and the build looks really nice in it as well. Now the 2500k is overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz and I've just got my old GTX 960 in there as well. That's just more because it's white, I've painted it white so we get the reflections from the RGB. Now that's not particularly hot hardware, although I've overclocked the 2500k, um, it is the 2500k was a soldered chip. Um, and I've got a 240 radiator on it as well. Now, I did do some gaming last night, and I will apologize, I forgot to hit the record button like an idiot. Um, and I was playing Battlefield 1, which was pretty much maxing out the CPU, and that was always going between like 55 and 65 degrees. As for the 960, um, that was sort of hovering around about 70 degrees as well, and that was with the fans at like 50, 60%, so, you know, I was trying to go for quiet. So that leads me on to pros and cons of this case then. Let's start with the cons. Now I'm not gonna go for the obvious ones. There's a few other little things that I didn't like about it as well. And these are just little nitpicks, things that I'd like to be improved. There's not reasons that you shouldn't buy the case. Um, you see when I put the SSD mounts in, so you've got the two mounts inside the case. Now, this really annoys me when they've got them on that side of the case because most SSDs I've ever owned, when you stick them in there, the label's upside down and that just sets off my OCD. So I don't want it anyway. Now, one thing I would have liked for that to have is blank plates in there because I've only populated one of them. Now, without the other one populated, I can see straight through to the back of the case. Now, the cable management, I was able to sort of route around it, but you know, you could probably get near to the end of your build, have it all finished looking all nice, and then totally forget that you can see a load of wires 
on the other side. So any OCD builders, that's just a little nitpick. And then that's the next thing for me, cable management in this case. Now both this and the Onyx don't really have great cable management. You've got an all glass case, you know, it's quite tight to the back. Um, I wouldn't say it's terrible, but it's not great. Now, the problem with this one is, is that this doesn't have a basement in the bottom where the Onyx did. So the Onyx had the basement, so you've got the two 2.3.5 inch drives down in here. Then you have the gap between the hard drive and the drive, so you can just stuff all your cables in there. You don't have that with this case. Obviously, I poked some in one of the 3.5 inch drives, but it definitely feels tighter building in, even though it's a bigger case. Um, another little nitpick as well. You could probably, they could have probably wrangled this so you could stick 280 radiators in the top, yet you can only stick 240 radiators in. Would have liked to have seen the option for 280 radiators if you're going to be using bigger, hotter hardware. And then there's just the obvious cons. There's just minimal airflow coming into this case. Now, the problem would be is if you put fans in the top blowing air in, so they're sucking air through that hole in the back. Um, then you're probably going to still want radiators. Now, if you put a radiator in the front, it's not getting no air. It's just going to be absolutely choked. So, like I said, for super hot hardware, if you live in super hot climates, maybe this case isn't for you. Um, but then that brings me on to the pros. Let's talk about the pros. Pros of the case. Look at these fans. The fans are gorgeous. Now, I said earlier that you couldn't buy them. You can actually buy these fans. I've seen them already on eBay for about £10 each. Like I said, Game Max are addressing that as well. They're going to be standardising the fans across their cases. So they know that's an issue. You've got the hub on the back that you can control up to, I think, oh God, I can't remember. It was either eight or 12 fans. So you can pack this thing full of these beautiful looking fans. You've got the remote. A couple of the buttons don't work, but in general speaking, where is the freaking remote? Okay, the remote's gone missing, but there's lots of options for the remote. You've got loads of I.O. on the front, even though it's got bad airflow. Like I said, you've got these big honeycomb cutouts on the back. All of the PCI slots have got loads of honeycomb cutouts as well. So you're going to get loads of air coming into this system through the back. You know, the graphics card will be able to pull air in and cool itself. Now, like I said as well, for graphics cards, I wouldn't go with reference cards. When I had my reference 1070 in the Game Max Onyx, it was getting about 10 degrees hotter than it would in any of my other cases. So if you are going to be putting graphics cards in here, big chunky graphics cards, get yourself a dual fan or a triple fan. That way it's going to pull loads of air through the back, dump it in the case, and then it will fly back out the case. It's not perfect, but you know, it's a beautiful looking case. Now, would I buy it for a hundred pounds? In fact, it's 110 pounds at a lot of places. If you want a fully tempered glass case, that's got the dark side to it. You know, got all this sort of blackness, the sort of real smoked darkness, then yeah, this could be a very good case for you. If you're not going to put loads of hot hardware in it, you know, super hot, like something like an RX Vega, then this could be the case for you. If not, if you are using super hot hardware, if you do like to have lots of airflow, the Corsair 460X is like £100 and it's a better built case and a better looking case, in my opinion. But I'd like to know your opinion. Is this a case that you would buy or is it the fact that it's just got, you know, minimum amounts of airflow, just a no for you? Let me know in the comment description. Anyway, that's it for me today and I'll be back with some more videos very soon.